Hey everybody, welcome back to the Stash Port from the Stash Project. Today is July 28th, 2019, and we have some kit announcements, we have some kit releases. Still not a mega show, necessarily. Uh, things have certainly spaced themselves out this month to uh, make them smaller, which is probably good for you guys, because then you don't have to listen to me blather on for like 45 minutes at a time. So we have some kit releases as far as some restocks, some new announcements. Um, this will probably be the last sort of big uh, data dump, if you will, for a little bit, because at the end of September, the last three days of September, actually, <clears throat> there is going to be the All Japan uh, Model and Hobby Show. Now, we uh, usually do a standalone little coverage show for that. We probably will again this year, uh, should the uh, releases and whatnot uh, justify it, getting a Great sun from right here. <laughs> now I know what's making my camera go out of balance while I'm recording. <laughs> oh well. And uh, with those being uh, coming up, you know, we're probably not going to see Aoshima's, uh, or well, Aoshima's, but uh, Hasegawa's October releases come out any earlier than like next month. Um, because uh, with Hasegawa, they tend to do their releases with like one or two little modified reissues or something like that. Maybe a reissue of something that hasn't been around for a while. In that month, the the, the show is immediately after. Because in this case, the show, again, is going to be the last three days right before October. So there's a chance we won't see the October uh, releases until like right before the show. Because then we'll get like October releases, November releases, and December releases all at one time. Because we'll get everything that they are putting out for the show at once. Uh, Aoshima more than likely is going to do one of those things where they're like, hey, everything we're doing is going to be in December, like they do with the shows. Uh, they have been doing with the shows, because last year, all their All Japan uh, stuff was supposed to come out in December. You saw with this year's Shizuka, everything is supposed to come out in July. Uh, obviously, the new to new toolkit is delayed, but everything ever so far, everything else that was supposed to come out did come out in July, so they were pretty on time with their show stuff this year, which is uh, nice to see. And you know, just just sort of like being the way of, way of the world, as it were. Um, you know, and we'll we'll see what we get out of people. Like we didn't get Fujimi's October stuff. Now that's not because they're because of the show, because their big show is Wonderfest, uh, which was this weekend we just passed over in Japan. So I'm looking to see if we can uh, if there's any kind of car stuff because Wonderfest for the most part is all sci-fi. It's all those crazy uh, Evangeline figures and all the sci-fi stuff. Uh, attached to all their various, uh, you know, anime and mangas and things like that over there. But it's the only trade show that Fujimi actually goes to, and so we usually see some sort of thing. There's two winter, two Wonderfest, one in the winter, one in the summer. The winter one is when we learned that they were going to be doing that second and third gen Jimny. Uh, so it'd be interesting to see if the summer Wonderfest, we got any kind of progress on those, maybe some test shots or anything like that or if they announce anything new, or, you know, whatever the case may be. So, anyway, let's plow into the kit announcements here. We've got some filler uh, stuff from Fujimi for August and September. So, for August, uh, they're going to be doing their uh, Mitsubishi Pajero full option, which is a curbside. Uh, it's about on par with the Aoshima kit of uh, their Mitsubishi Pajero, so it's not exactly anything great. It is only a Pajero, meaning it's only Japanese, only left -hand, or only right-hand drive, um, so keep that in mind. They're going to reissue their Nissan Silvia S14 in its uh, K and Autech boxing. That's something that came out probably about two years at this point, where it has uh, the Silvia K, which is uh, basically the top of the line of the Sylvia models, because I, I didn't really realize this, and I did some research on something else we're going to talk about here in a second, but the whole JQK thing is based on the face value of playing cards, as in Jack, Queen, King. So the King level, as it were, is the uh, sort of the premium trim level. There's a couple things above that, which again we'll get into here in a second, but the King level was the basically the top of the line. And then Autech is a tuning company, and so this kit has... Uh, a couple of tune, a couple of pieces, extra pieces, wheels, a couple of spoilers, and things like that to make the Autech version. These were separate kits, but in the past, now they're sort of unified. Uh, they're going to reissue their Nissan Fairlady Z432R, which is the racing homogenization version of the Z uh, of the 240Z. Uh, that does probably come with an engine. It has in the past. It usually comes with two engines because it has the regular 240Z engine, and then it has the 
uh, engine out of the 1972-73 GTR as well, because the race version used the GTR's engine, or vice versa, depending on how you want to look at it. Uh, reissue of the Nissan Silvia RS110, reissue of the 2005 Subaru WRX STI, a reissue of the Land Cruiser 80, which is um, an 80s uh, generation of the Land Cruiser. It's kind of a, a basic kit, curbside, very simplified chassis and stuff like that. They did make a Land Cruiser 100, which is like the 90s version of the Land Cruiser, and that one is actually a pretty decent curbside kit. Um, there's nothing wrong with the Land Cruiser 80, it's just know that it's one of those things that, uh, like so many... Uh, older Japanese 1980s era curbside kits. You ain't showing them on the bottom because there's not really a chassis to speak of. And then lastly, they're going to reissue their Isuzu Bighorn. Um, this is what we got over here is the Isuzu Trooper. You cannot build it as an Isuzu Trooper. It is right-hand drive only. And it is an incredibly basic uh, kit. I don't know if it was as a toy that they then got the tooling to and made a model kit out of. I don't know if it was supposed to be like an RC cart at some point in time in its past, but it is really cannibalized as far as the toy motorized nature of the chassis and some of the interior pieces. But those are, again, like I said, filler for August. And then in September, their filler kits are going to be the Mazda RX-8, Type S. A lot of people forgot there was a Mazda RX-8, I bet. And the 1993 Toyota MR2. Curbside, not a bad kit. Um, <laughs> sorry, something popped up on my screen there. It's just a overlay from my printer. <laughs> uh, then we have the reissue stuff for September from Aoshima. This is stuff just restocked. Nothing new about any of this. Just restocking the shelves. Uh, you got the Liberty Walk, Liberty Works, Nissan, C110, uh, Skyline, Ken and Mary, Racing Tribute number 73. That's uh, one of the newer kits that they did uh, from All Japan last year. Uh, reissue of the Volkswagen Beetle 1303S Cabriolet. Uh, why would these Beetle reissues? Uh, reissue of the 2002 Nista, uh, Mazda RX-7 FD3S Spirit R Type B. Reissue of the 2006 Toyota Harrier. That is a snap tight kit. Reissue of the 1991 Mitsubishi Pajero Super Exceed. So you get both both curbside <laughs> Mitsubishi over the course of a couple of weeks. Uh, reissue of the 2006 Honda Odyssey Absolute, which is now a little bit too far off camera over here, but that's the one that comes with uh, the two bodies. So you can do the 2004 or the 2006. Just was reissued, just released what about four months ago. Reissue of the 1990 Nissan Leopard Ultima. Reissue of the Toyota 86 Rocket Bunny in the Enki Racing version. Reissue of the Top Secret Nissan R34. GTR. Reissue of the Mines Nissan R34 GTR. Uh, also reissue of the Lamborghini Aventador Supervelos. Uh, reissue of the Liberty Walk C110 Ken and Mary Nissan Skyline uh, four-door. And then you're going to get three rim sets in September. BBS RGs, BBS RS2s in 17-inch, and BBS DTMs in 18-inch. Now, we flip over to October, and these are going to be some Honest to God, new announcements you guys haven't heard of yet. Uh, Fujimi, the only thing we have for Fujimi for October so far is they're reissuing some more wheel sets. The RS Watanabe Deep uh, Rim, 15 inches, and the Panasport in the 14 inch. Over at Aoshima, some interesting things here, kind of, sort of. Uh, they're going to reissue both of the Kayasuki Takahashi FD3S RX7s that they just did in the initial D series over the last like three months. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, wow, they sold out already? No, no. Both of these are going to be pre-painted kits. So uh, if you couldn't not be bothered to paint something yellow, I mean, Jesus, the, the effort that goes into that, now you can get them pre-painted. Now, with all of Aosha's pre-paints that we talk about all the time, they are painted on the runners. So you will have to cut them off, and there's going to be some you know color matching as you go around uh, cleaning up sprue attachment points like that, but they are completely pre-painted. They aren't like the Ravel pre-paints we got there for a little while where the body was painted and then everything else wasn't. Uh, they are completely pre-painted. Windows are blacked. Everything everything is painted. It's just still attached to the runners. And then in the uh, other stuff for the month, reissue of the 1999 Mazda MX-5 Miata RS. Now, we just got that Mazda Miata like A-spec version of this kit, which was a JDM-only thing. The A-spec was never exported anywhere uh, anywhere near America, but this kit, ladies and gentlemen, if you've been looking for a second-gen Mazda Miata, you know how hard that is to find because the only one of them that was released that has left-hand drive was a lightweight sports version, and it was in there a 
line that Aoshima did in the 19, late 1990s uh, called Lightweight Sports. Um, had that in it, had some of the other, like the K-Card convertibles, like the Suzuki Cappuccino and things like that in it. That is the only second-gen Miata kit there is with a left-hand drive dashboard in it. And that was reissued, that was released one time, never reissued, back in 1998, uh, I think it was. So, what do you do? You, you you could try to find one. <laughs> Good luck with that. I managed to pick one up for $17 because my local hobby shop guy had been dragging it around at shows for the last 20 years, and he finally got tired of doing that, and he stuck it in the shop. And I don't know if I just never saw it before, but it was in the shop, and I was like, oh, hey, I gotta, I'm got i going to grab that real quick. So um, that was a while ago, so I can't really be like, oh, I bought that, and now the new one's coming out. But I'm glad I only paid $17 for that because if I paid like $40 or $50 to have the second-gen uh, MX-5, I probably would have been a little steamed that it's going to be coming back out again at like $22. But for everybody who's, like I said, wants a second-gen U.S. spec or export spec at least, uh, MX-5, that is finally going to get a reissue after 21 years of never seeing the light of day. Also on the slate here, the 1991 Nissan Silvia S13, what they're calling the Diamond Selection. Now this is going to have a newly tooled front aero bumper, as well as some newly tooled wheels included. This will allow you to build their S13 Silvia in any factory stock configuration that the car, I think, was pretty much uh, available in. Because the aero spec is one thing, which this bumper fills out the last of. They have the rest of the body kit already in the Sylvia's from doing other things with them, but this front bumper will be there. I think the alum these new genuine aluminum wheels that I like to call their uh, wheels uh, fill in the J spec Sylvia, which is the the uh, you know the jack of the Queen King thing, and then you can also build it as a Q, as a K, or as a diamond selection. And the diamond selection was a trim group where it took all of the options from all three of the JKQ uh, cars and then also added automatic climate control. Now, I don't think that's going to be represented, but it is very interesting that this will be sort of the first time, again, you can build it in any, any configuration the car came in. Now, it probably isn't going to have any tuner parts like the Rasty stuff, and it probably, you know, it's a curbside. It does come with the engine insert, so that's, that's back. That's been uh, missing out of a couple of the last reissues of the S13. So... Uh, if you've really been looking for an S13, uh, this is a, certainly an opportunity to grab one. And then lastly, they are going to reissue their 1998 Toyota, or Toyota, excuse me, Subaru Legacy wagon in the famous, because some people really like the, the body kit on it, and it's another kit that hasn't been out probably since 1998, the Hippo Sleek <laughs> VIP tuner version of that car. So uh, it's a purple car on the box art. Um, it's like I said, it's been around. Some people have it. They seem to be, you know, very proud of it in the sense that they have one you don't in and in it. Well, so much for that. <laughs> uh, you know, I love it when they get to destroy some kit value. <clears throat> so let's move on to the releases for this week. We did get several releases here uh, domestically. Uh, over at round two, we got this, which is the release of the MPC boxed 1 8 scale Schwinn Stingray Classic Crate. I only mention this here because it was just, you know, one of the things that came along this uh, month. Now, you see there on the uh, box, you've got a sticker molded in orange crate orange. Uh, they are available in three different colors, orange, red, and I think it's yellow. And there's th basically there's going to be four of the colors in every full case of 12, so there's three of each. Or excuse me, four of each of the three colors. And then uh, you're going to have to obviously look at the, the box lid, and as well as the, the parts layout on the bottom will tell you what color it's molded in. So... Um, you know, if you want a yellow one, make sure you actually buy a yellow one, don't buy an orange one, and then go home all upset about it. So that's back out there for people who are interested in that. And then over at Ravel, we got several releases, and I think this is pretty much everything that was slated to come out uh, in July. Now, we're kind of in a period where uh, August may have the Baja Bandito and the Monte Carlo, I guess, maybe the Buick Grand National. Um you know, we're, we're, just, we all sort of work on what Ed shows it shows at this point because while the hobby guys have a have a you know a display list uh, or a distribution list, it's not exactly been the most accurate thing uh, as of right now either. So you know, just go with what comes out, I guess. And uh, they are 
the reissue of the Monogram 124 scale 1976 Chevy Sports Stepside 4x4. Now, this kit does share uh, some pieces and parts with the, uh, I think it's the big game hunter truck. No, excuse me, the plow truck. Uh, and uh, this is the one, that, the last time we saw this kit in this format was 1992. It was a powder blue uh, truck on a mo in a, one of those monogram boxes from the, from the uh, late 80s, early 90s. And this is the one that has the spare tire carrier on the tailgate, if you're trying to place where you've seen this before. So it's a reissue of that. I think this kit's, this is only the fourth time this kit's been reissued, and a couple of releases when it came back in the very early uh, 80s, late 70s, and then it had the release in 1992. And uh, yeah, 124 scale, looks uh, pretty decent. There's uh, obviously new decals in here, which seem to be for the first ones so far that aren't completely, uh, you know, out of control as far as uh, Ravel's decals since they've restarted. We've seen a couple goofs with the Ford GT decals being out of register in the wrong colors and things like that. And then the AR Kudas decals are curved in a weird way so they don't fit the body. These ones look like they're okay <laughs> if you want to use them. And uh, it does have like wood grain for the dash as well as the dash decal. So you get a little bit, a little bit of extra decal detail to it that, uh, you know, an older kit like that kind of sort of needs to be relevant in the uh, current day. And then we got the reissue of the 1970 Pontiac Firebird. This is uh, not quite a two-in-one, but it does come with the the uh, large, you know, I guess they're probably 19, 20-inch rims with the low-profile tires. There's nothing new about that. It's come with those the last couple of reissues. Um, this, again, is something that hasn't been out for a little while. It got a street, uh, the, uh, what, a street burner reissue. Uh, probably about 10, 12 years ago or so. So it's been a little while since this came out. I think it might have been nine years ago. I think this might actually still be on the nine-year uh, Ravel re reissue uh, cycle. But I know a lot of people were kind of interested in this. This is, again, an older monogram kit from the 1980s. It is 124 scale, so keep that in mind. Nothing new about that, just being reboxed. And then we got this, and I'm sorry the picture's small, but there's only a couple of people that are selling them on eBay right now. Uh, and so... The, the picture is what the picture is. And this is the Joey Saldana 19, uh, number 71 Indy Race Car Part Sprint Car. So this is the one that, we sh that uh, was debuted at, basically with all of its parts, debuted at NNL East. And it has a whole slew of new things. It does come with a driver figure, which I didn't realize uh, looking at my pictures that it did. It comes with a driver figure. And then, again, this thing probably has about five uh, sprues worth of new pieces to update it to... 2017 spec sprint car. Uh, this is based on that old monogram kit, so this is another 124 scale kit. Based on the old monogram uh, sprint car kits from the 80s and the 90s, it's just been uh, updated to 2017 spec. And I'll leave it to other people who know actually know sprint cars. Uh, I've never really been a huge, terribly large fan of dirt track sprint cars. I know a whole bunch of people just unsubscribe when I said that. So I don't know, you know, the tech specs of being like, oh, well, this is right and this is wrong. But, uh, again, a whole bunch of new parts into that to update it. It is not just new decals on the old 1980s kit for people who care. And that'll take us over to Japan. We have mostly Aoshima stuff to talk about. One little uh, Hasegawa box to throw out there. Again, not a normally something we discuss, but uh, 124 scale, so we'll go for it here. And this is the number five in their figure collection. They're calling it the Companion Girl Figures. Uh, obviously, they're supposed to be auto show girls, uh, as you can tell from the backdrop. Uh, my personal favorite of the... Uh, of the uh, Descriptions I've seen of this is the literal English translation that Hobby Search uses, which is bouncy bikini girls. <laughs> so, here are your bouncy bikini girls. Uh, yeah, so some 124 scale kits. These are injected molded. They're not resin or anything else like that. And, uh, you know, if you're having to looking for some go-go uh, boot wearing crop top short short girls for your auto show, now your answers, your prayers have been answered. Uh, again, assuming you wanted them to have Asian facial features, but be that as it may. Uh, over at Aoshima, that'll be the rest of this video. We got a couple of just straight reissues. First up is the uh, Nissan S13 Silvia. So here's the Rasty version of that. Uh, this is basically the D1 Grand Prix car without any of its D1 Grand Prix stuff. If you're curious as to what the what the lineage is here, but uh, yeah, so this S factory stock. That's what we're gonna get in October. And then uh, we got the reissue of the C West 
Lancer Evo 10, so that is back out as well. Now moving on to things that were from Shizuka that are newly released, as it were. First up we have, and let me get my paperwork out to tell you the, the guy's name here, we have the Watoro Akiyami AE8611. So, much like uh, the, the uh, tofu, infamous Tofu car, that's a A86 Truno, this is 11, and in this pick box art, you get to see the difference between a Truno and 11. All right, the 11 has the composite, flush-mounted front headlights, and the A86 uh, Truno is in the background there with the flip-up headlights. So, if you've ever been sitting there and I've explained this to you, and you're like, what the hell is he talking about? There, there, now you get to see it in, in real life. New parts to this kit are the front bumper, as well as the wheels. That's pretty much it. Everything else is a, is a recombination of, of older parts from other kits. Uh, there is no engine in this, so keep that in mind. And uh, I, I want to say this is a Volume 1 uh, kit as far as where it fits into the comic book series. Um, this was sort of like the, you know, head cocky guy. And then, of course, uh, Takahashi just ran him down the road with the, uh, with the tofu delivery vehicle. And, uh, yeah, so that's out. Kind of interesting. Then over at the Liberty Walks, Liberty Works side of things, we got this. This is the Charasuka Works uh, uh, Skyline. I was going to say something else there. I lost my, completely lost my train of thought. It is uh, the most current rendition of this sort of race tribute vehicle that they did. Um, as far as what you get in the kit, the over fenders are new. You have to, have to cut the body apart. Well, actually, you don't have to cut the body apart. You have to shave the existing over fenders off and then put these new over fenders on. And there is a little bit of a body cutout you have to do to, fit, to make the wheels fit. And then it has a new rear bumper, new rear exhaust, and then new rear taillights. It's pretty much everything else, again, a recombination of parts from the other Liberty Walk kits, the other, you know, uh, C10 uh, Skyline kits and whatnot, so that's back out there in a new uh, configuration. And then we have the two sort of factory stock kits, the model cars lineup kits, and they are this, the Toyota Crown Patrol car. This is the 2015 uh, spec car. A little bit of things that had to go into this as far as the uh, new parts. You have new wheels in here, uh, a new grill that has the uh, LED lights behind the grill and the, the Japanese police uh, logo insignia thing on the uh, grill, so the crown grill uh, thing. All of the emergency lighting is new because, of course, the emergency lighting that they would have, and at this point, is all from the 1990s, and we're in LED technology and things like that. You build this uh, a couple of different car numbers, but this represents a Tokyo Metropolitan Police Car Traffic Division uh, vehicle. They do give you uh, masks for the outside of the car to do that two-tone divide down the side, as well as the widow's peak on the hood, so I think that's a nice touch. I would not necessarily shock me at some point in the future. This gets reissued as a pre-paint, but right now you got to paint it yourself. And then the other kit we have is this, the 1990 Toyota Estima, or Estima, depending on how you want to pronounce that. This kit was released back in 1997 or 1998 as an Estima like high-level trim kit, and then I got another reissue of sort of the sporty high-level trim, and both those names escape me right now, and I'm not going to bother to pause and look them up, but those uh, kits were out, and they floated around a little bit. There was like a four-wheel drive version of it at one point. It was in their RV series, which was a series of kits that were like dedicated to sort of a camping motif, and uh, so to do this, to make this kit just a base Estima, new wheels, new front bumper, new rear bumper, new sort of overhang spoiler, like off the, above the, the uh, hatch in the back, that's optional, but that's there, and then the entire interior, except for like the dashboard, is new, like all new seats had to be created for this because they didn't have any base model seats for the interior, uh, 2000, that's when this kit came out, just suddenly I Photo, I flashed back to the parts layout that I looked at this morning, and yeah, this most all of this kit is either tooled in 2000 or 2019. There's no in between. There were no like parts added to it over the course of the years. So, if you ever wanted a factory stock version of this, man, I wish they would do this as a Previa. I think they would sell a couple of them in the United States. I know it's not enough money to justify the left-hand drive conversion, uh, but. You know, I'd still like to have a... I still buy one as a Previa rather than I'm not buying one as an Estima, so I don't know. 
Yeah, that I leave that up to you and your wise decision making <laughs> for your model collection. So, anyway, guys, that wraps up this one. We hope you enjoyed it. Hope you guys had a great weekend. We spent the entire weekend pretty much outside doing yard work, still cleaning up from the trees we had cut down in the spring, uh, just burning wood at this point. And then uh, you may notice that this shelf is back here, and it shouldn't be. Uh, the behind the camera side of things about a year ago. You guys probably remember this if you're really long time watchers here i painted that wall a portion portion of that wall and then i reorganized my shelving to have all of my toyota stuff in one convenient spot and i had planned to keep painting the wall and then reorganize my nissan stuff and then we see what fit into the shelves after that and like a year later i finally got around to doing that this weekend so this as soon as i shut this video off this is going back where it belongs and uh, we'll start restocking my Nissan kits in here, and uh, then we'll get a little better idea of uh, how bad things are <laughs> in terms of what's sort of laying around the house in the basement here. Um, I've got to paint one more, probably about six foot section of wall, and then I'm going to take these shelves that you see here, and they're going to go down the wall about a foot, and then a new shelf will appear here. I need to, you know, have enough gap there so that on both ends, this shelving doesn't, like, end in the shelf over here and block everything off. But uh, it'll all fit, and then we'll have one more new shelf. You guys will get a whole new view here because this will be down there, and so there'll be something new back here. So, hey, your background changes. I mean, all those, all, all of these M3s and cruises and... and Jaguars and stuff will probably still be here, although some of that stuff's going to get moved. Uh, you're gonna have a, you'll have a whole new something back here to stare at. Won't that be fun? So, anyway, uh, again, guys, we hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you guys on the other side.